All right, so if you have a Dyson Ball Animal 2 or a Dyson Multi-Floor 2, these are going to be essentially the same process here. Uh, some of the more common complaints people have about it is a loss of suction, uh, or there can be a shut-off situation happening, which is a feature, actually, uh, that it's a thermal switch that shuts off if there's some kind of blockage uh, to keep the motor from burning up. In both cases, the solution is essentially the same. There's some blockage somewhere in one of the either six places or some buildup in other places, uh, that's causing it to lose suction or to automatically shut off. So uh, we're going to do a deep clean today. Basically everything that can be looked at and cleaned, we're going to clean it. Let's get started with the brush roll. All right, so I have this flipped over. And the first thing I want to do is take this uh, latch off here by just pulling a, on the two sides of it. And that will allow this to come right off. There's a little plug here that you need to pay attention to when plugging that back, back up. This is obviously one of the more common places for blockage. Um, first, let's get a good look at this, and you do that by these two tabs here. Just pull those up, and it comes off very easily. Now, there's going to be a lot of hair built up here. Uh, you want to take care of that by taking a pair of scissors, and you can see these little slots here. They're actually there, so you can uh, get a little uh, bit of leverage when you get the scissors under there to cut the hair, and then, of course, pull that out. Now, there is oftentimes blockage under here. You can see where the suction is going through. There can be blockage here. If you don't uh, already, turn this if it doesn't already move when you take the hair out because there can be blockage on the other side of there. I've seen that quite a lot. So once you've done those things, you've done pretty much all you can with the floor nozzle and it's time to reassemble it. Uh, the way I do that is to turn it away from me. But These three slots right here and these three tabs kind of slide into each other. And you need to do those first. This can be a little tricky, actually. Uh, but you can kind of side it up to where you're slotting those in there. And your guide is going to be these two guys right here. They need to be flush with the bottom here. And they won't be flush until they're kind of pulled all the way back that way. And you can see here it's flush there. And we've locked that back up. Before putting the brush roll back on, uh, check the hole where it goes. You can normally see quite a bit in there as far as the hose goes and see if there's any blockage down there. All right, so reattaching this cleaner head is pretty easy. Uh, you take this uh, clip, which is... Oh, I just noticed my cat scratched me pretty good there. I uh, take this clip. It's got writing on one side. You need to face the other way with that writing and Basically, just put this on first. Dyson recommends that you actually put this clip on first before you put it on the machine. The main thing to notice when you're putting this on the machine is that there's a little outlet here that corresponds with this right here. So it's kind of tricky to line it up, but not too bad. As long as you get that part lined up, you just need to apply a little force to it. And you can hear that click, and that means that the clip already attached itself. All right, so there's a couple places on this side of the vacuum that you want to check for blockages. Uh, right here, obviously, and I've taken the canister off. Um, right here, this hose here, and this little latch right here, which you can just kind of pull up. You can look into that. That hose is actually going up, um, not down to the brush roll. And so it's a different hose, and so make sure you look there for any blockages. No blockages in any of those places. We've got to flip it over and check the other side. All right, when it's in upright mode, you can actually see this little screw right here. And you've got to be very careful not to lose it. It is extremely tiny. And it kind of does a latching thing there. And this hose actually goes to the brush roll. We sort of checked it already, but it's a good place to check again. Um, to reattach it, basically you can kind of get a hold of it from underneath and push up. And you should also hear another little snap to let you know that it's in place. If you manage not to lose your screw, then you just screw it back up. The dust canister is an interesting place that can be causing some loss of suction. Uh, but to get to where it might be getting to you, we need to open up the clear bin and remove it from the cyclones. And to do that, you need to actually push down on the lever. And the reason you need to do that is because it, re it reveals this button here, uh, which you can then uh, push, and that button is the release for the cyclone mechanism. Now, this is a great opportunity for deep clean. Dyson recommends that you only use a, a damp cloth to clean the inside of this, um, and it will take a while because 
you know, cleaning these seals and stuff with a damp rag, it's a little bit of a detail work, but it is good to get those seals. Uh, it's not going to do all that much for your suction, but it's a great deep cleaning practice. What we have here is this little mesh that can get really caked up with this kind of stuff. And if it is, if this is covered right here, it's almost certainly a huge part of your suction loss problem. And it's just about as easy as can be to get that off. Take a rag, damp or otherwise, uh, scrubby pad if it's really bad, but it should be fairly easy to f uh, free up that grate. Putting the cyclone back in is pretty easy. The only trick is to make sure that you're lining this button up with the button hole that's just under there. And if you do that, it should snap in perfectly. Another common area for blockages is the hose mechanism. There's a couple places here. Uh, so I would take this hose out, extend it, hit this button while pulling on the top part of it. We'll release this. You need to check this for blockages. So just give that a look over. Now with the hose, there's a few ways to do this. Um, but I would first obviously look for blockages, but then I would go through, extend it and do a visual inspection for breaks in the hose because that can be a certainly a cause of loss of suction and it should be very easy to see if you do have that. Also I should mention in terms of uh, deep cleaning, there's really not a good way to clean this hose. If you vacuumed up something you know wet and nasty and this is causing the vacuum to smell or something like that, it's not a great way to wash and dry this. Uh, you can replace them. I've seen replacement parts at a uh, I, I really, there's some on Amazon, but they're not the right size. They're not the right ones. They say they are, but they're not. Haven't seen any on eBay. Dyson doesn't sell them. I think Dyson has some kind of deal with this uh, website that I'll put in the description where you can buy them and they're about 30 bucks. Um, but to remove this, let me show you how to do that really quick. All right, so there's a little tab in the back here. And what you do is you simply pull that towards you and pull up and the hose will come out. And it's also a great way to check for more blockages here. Um, to install this again, <clears throat> it's a little tricky. Uh, the main thing is it's got two little slots you need to pay attention to that go in there. And to get leverage, I hold the tab again and push down on the tab. That's really the best way to do that. Otherwise it gets kind of hard. So both the filters on the Dyson Ball Animal 2 and the Dyson Multi-Floor 2 are washable. Um, so you flip this over to this side. And this is a little screw mechanism that you just kind of have to turn counterclockwise enough until it just is able to lift off. You can see it's basically just a screw. And then you simply turn this. It's got a little locking mechanism there. You just turn it to the left and it'll slide neatly off. The filter in the canister is very easy to take off. There's just a little tab on front here that you simply pull and you can pull the filter out. So when you're washing these, Dyson recommends only cold water. Now with this filter, you can get it really soaked in there and you can be kind of rough with it. You can squeeze it and do whatever you can uh, under that cold water. Basically what you're trying to do is get that brown water that's gonna come out of there to run clear. And once it is running clear and you've soaked it and wring it out, wring it out one more time, get all the water out, let it sit for 24 hours. <laughs> with this one, you don't do any squeezing or anything. You're just gonna run water over it. You do wanna get all the debris out that you can. Uh, you know, in the trash can or whatever before you wash them. But yeah, with this one, you don't squeeze it or anything. You just run the water over it. You need to let these sit for 24 hours. And that's important because if they're still damp, they can suck water into the vacuum motor and you don't want that. I'm also going to show you how to put this back on because honestly, it can be a little tricky. Um, so you want to put this back on same way you'd put it on, except for this way time you're going clockwise to snap it on there. It kind of locks in. Those two arrows should be pointing to one another. Now notice that this screw is kind of on one side and pointed at an angle. And this is basically dead center. So it's kind of like you're putting this in at an angle is the only way to get it to snap. Now this is important. When you tighten this all the way, it should click. And that's how you know it's, it's on there, it's locked, it's not going to come off. So make sure you hear that before uh, you stop spinning it. All right, so if I miss something, put it in the comments so other people can benefit from your knowledge. Uh, consider a like if this video helped you out and thanks for watching.